2021 Honda Pilot versus the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas. What do you need to know about these large three row crossovers before buying one? That's what we're going to find out. I'm Sherry Primack, a teacher, professional car buyer, and auto expert with over a decade experience helping thousands of consumers. I've hosted car shows, been a regular on the news, and reviewed the coolest cars, but helping the car buying public is what I do best. So for any car buying advice, make sure to subscribe. Welcome to Car Help Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. Now, if you're in the market for a three-row crossover SUV, you have a lot of options to consider, including the Honda Pilot and Volkswagen Atlas. Now, the reason I put these two particular SUVs together for this comparison is the fact that they are two of the largest and most spacious SUVs in the three-row crossover segment. So if you're looking for a large SUV that has the passenger and cargo space of a traditional minivan, then these two crossovers will probably interest you. The other reason I put these two SUVs together is the fact that they're also both available in slightly smaller two row variants known as the Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport and the Honda Passport. So if you're looking at one of these SUVs and you mostly need them for the space instead of the third rows, then you have these two options to consider as an alternative. In this video, I'm going to compare the Atlas and Pilot in the areas that matter most, including their design, reliability, and value for money. I've also got some very interesting reliability and maintenance tips to share on these particular SUVs that you probably will not find on any other channel, so make sure to stick around to the end of the video. So let's start with the Honda Pilot, which has been on the market for quite a long time, and in that time has built a very strong reputation when it comes to its overall build quality and reliability. Honda is a brand that's well known for the quality and longevity of its cars, and the Pilot is definitely a part of that reputation. On top of the peace of mind that you get with the Pilot, you also get a fairly well-designed SUV overall that offers a ton of interior space and cargo room. If you need an SUV that has a lot of space for passengers, the Pilot is available in both 7-seater and 8-seater configurations, and while it's not quite as spacious as the Odyssey minivan, it does offer a lot of space in all three rows for passengers. You can create a ton of cargo room by folding down the third and second row of seats, and the third row is quite accessible thanks to a one-touch push button that gives you really easy access. Honda has also thought of practical features for families in the Pilot, with features like cabin talk that's basically just a PA system that lets you speak through the speakers to the kids sitting in the third row. There's also an available entertainment system with a Blu-ray player and app streaming capability. Up front, the Pilot offers tons of storage space and easy to use straightforward controls. The standard 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system comes with both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability, which is great to see. The only issue with it really is the fact that it is a bit unresponsive and dated looking when compared to other infotainment systems on the market. The other issue is that it forces you to do a lot of commonly used tasks through the touchscreen itself because it lacks traditional buttons and knobs along the sides other than the physical volume knob. Although some of the tech in the Pilot could definitely use an update, the safety features on the Pilot are definitely competitive with a lot of other three-row crossovers. Honda calls its active safety features Honda Sensing, and you get all of these safety features as standard on every trim level of the Pilot. When it comes to the drivetrain, the Pilot uses a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6 engine that makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. It comes matched to a 9-speed automatic transmission with standard all-wheel drive in Canada, but in the US you can also get it with standard front-wheel drive. Honda's 3.5 liter V6 is a super reliable engine that offers great performance and has pretty decent fuel economy as well, thanks to the use of cylinder deactivation, which can shut down a couple of cylinders when driving on the highway. The other great thing about the Pilot is that when properly spec'd out, it is capable of towing up to around 5,000 pounds, which should be really useful for those who do cottage road trips. Overall, although it is due for a pretty substantial update in the near future, the existing Pilot is still a very well-designed SUV that gets the job done. Now compared to the Pilot, which does have a more bland and conventional crossover look, the Atlas definitely has a much more bold and blocky look to it, and definitely stands out more on the road. In terms of size, the Atlas is one of the largest three-row crossovers on the market, and Volkswagen does like to brag that it has the most spacious interior in its class. Space is definitely not an issue with the Atlas, and all three rows of seats have plenty of room for passengers to stretch out comfortably. The only issue here is that the Atlas is only available in six or seven seater configurations, as opposed to the Pilot, which can be had as either a seven seater version or an eight seater version, which makes it slightly more practical. 
If you're okay with that though, the Atlas should impress you and it does have a very well designed interior overall. Although it's nowhere near as fancy as some of the other European brand SUVs that it's related to, the interior of the Atlas is still very well designed and it comes with some great technology as well. The standard touchscreen is a 6.5 inch display, but the higher trim levels do get a much better 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system with both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's also an available 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster behind the steering wheel which gives you all kinds of useful information and has a really great looking display. Compared to the Pilot which only gives you one drivetrain choice, the Atlas is available with a couple different choices including a base 2 liter 4 cylinder turbocharged engine with 235 horsepower or you can get an optional 276 horsepower V6 engine on the higher trim levels. Both the 4 cylinder turbo and V6 engine come matched to an 8 speed automatic transmission with standard 4 motion all wheel drive in Canada but in the US you can also get standard front wheel drive. Not only does the V6 offer better performance performance and more power, it's also the more well proven engine with a better track record and a simpler engine design thanks to the lack of turbocharging technology. Whichever option you go with however, reliability and operating cost might always be a concern because whichever way you look at it, Volkswagen in general just doesn't have the same great reputation as other brands. Like other Volkswagen models, the reliability history of the Atlas is definitely a mixed bag and it just doesn't have the same reputation as other brands such as Toyota and Honda. Volkswagens are also well known for their above average maintenance and repair costs, which is definitely a concern if you're planning on buying one of these SUVs to keep for the long term, say for at least an 8 to 10 year period. Now some of the risks and running costs with owning a Volkswagen were partly offset by the amazing warranty that they came with, which was 6 years or 70,000 miles. As of the 2020 model year however, Volkswagen reduced its warranty coverage down to only 4 years or 50,000 miles or the same 4 years 80,000 kilometers that it has been in Canada. Now part of the reason that Volkswagen reduced its warranty coverage by so much was because of the sheer money they were spending on warranty claims which probably tells you something about their reliability and the cost of maintenance and repairs. Now when it comes to value for money, both of these crossovers are fairly comparable in pricing with MSRPs that range from the $42,000 range up to around $55,000 depending on which trim level you go with. And since these are both slightly older designs and not the latest and greatest SUVs on the market like the new Kia Telluride or the Toyota Highlander, you can find some pretty good deals on both the Pilot and Atlas with some amazing rebates and purchase incentives. Although they are good choices for those who are looking for the most amount of space in a 3 row SUV, I still wouldn't rank them at the top of the SUV segment. Because of the potentially high repair and maintenance costs, I'd have a hard time recommending the Atlas to anyone who's looking for an SUV to keep for the long term. Overall, the Pilot is the safer choice because of its much better reputation for reliability and lower operating costs. It might look and feel a little bit dated when compared to the latest and best crossovers in the segment like the Kia Telluride and the Toyota Highlander, but it is still worth considering, especially if you can get a really good deal on one for a much lower price. Let me know what you think of either the Honda Pilot, the Volkswagen Atlas, or any other SUVs, and if you'd like to suggest a car comparison or a car topic for a future video, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also check out some of my other car comparison videos. And if you need any additional car advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, check out carhelpcanada.com. Their team of experts would be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.